Right, so Meta's AI chief, Yang LeCong, just released a new paper that could genuinely end the era of large language models for true human-level intelligence. And honestly, we need to talk about this right now. I mean, LeCong is one of the three literal godfathers of AI, and while the rest of the world is distracted by the hype, he has essentially dropped a nuclear bomb on the industry with this new architecture called VJEPA, which fundamentally challenges everything we think we know about how machines should learn. Because honestly, the entire internet is completely obsessing with the wrong thing. Everyone is looking at OpenAI, everyone is looking at the new Gemini updates, everyone is looking at the stock prices of NVIDIA. But while the whole world has been hypnotized by the bigger is better narrative, Yan LeCun, who is literally one of the godfathers of deep learning, the guy who essentially invented the convolutional neural networks that allow computers to see, has just dropped a paper that fundamentally challenges the trajectory of the entire industry. He released this new architecture called VJEPA, and if you actually sit down and read the math in this paper, which I've been doing for the last 48 hours straight, it suggests that the era of the large language model, the era of reasoning in tokens, might be hitting a concrete wall. I mean, essentially, we've been told for two years that if we just feed a model more data and give it more GPUs, magic happens. But this paper is the first real tangible proof that we might be driving 100 miles an hour down a dead-end street. Because, and this is the crazy part, Lacan is betting everything on the idea that language is actually a distraction from true intelligence. Now, to understand why this is such a massive deal, we have to talk about the System 1 versus System 2 problem, because this is the philosophical core of the entire debate. If you've ever read Daniel Kahneman's work, you know that the human brain basically has two modes. System 1 is fast, it's instinctive. It's what happens when someone throws a ball at your face and you duck without thinking, or when you finish the sentence bread and with butter. It's a reflex. And honestly, if we're being real with ourselves, that's exactly what LLMs are doing. It's an autocomplete machine on steroids. It doesn't stop to think. It doesn't plan. It doesn't simulate the future. It just statistically predicts the next word based on the last word flowing from left to right, never looking back. I know what a lot of you are screaming at your screens right now, but wait, we have GPT-5, we have Gemini 3 Ultra, we've been using these models for months, aren't they basically doing this already? But, and this is the part that is genuinely frustrating, if you look at the actual architecture logs, it's fundamentally not true. Because even though GPT-5 is massive, and even though it feels like magic compared to what we had two years ago, it's still thinking in tokens. It's still, at its core, trapped in System 1 thinking which means it's just a hyper-advanced, incredibly charming autocomplete machine that's reacting to your prompts rather than a deliberate System 2 reasoner that's actually planning and understanding the physics of the world before it speaks. But System 2, and this is what we actually need for AGI, is slow, deliberate, logical thinking. It's what you do when you're trying to park a car in a tight spot or solve a math problem. You simulate the outcome in your head before you act. And the uncomfortable reality that this paper highlights is that you simply can't scale a System 1 reflex into a System 2 reasoner. No matter how many trillions of parameters you add, you can make the reflex better, you can make it sound smarter, but you can't make it think. So this brings us to the actual architecture of VJEPA, which stands for Vision, Language, Joint Embedding, Predictive Architecture. The concept is genuinely revolutionary because it stops trying to be generative. If you look at how a standard vision model works today, they're operating in pixel space. If I show the model of dog jumping over a fence, the AI has to painstakingly predict every single pixel, the color of the fur, the shadow on the grass, the light hitting the fence. That's incredibly expensive computationally, but if also why the videos are hallucinations. The AI is so obsessed with painting the pixels that it forgets the physics. It forgets that a dog has four legs, not five. It forgets that a fence is solid. But VJEPA operates in latent space, or semantic space, which basically means it predicts the meaning, not the raw data. So we need to actually pull up figure two from the paper right now because, and I cannot stress this enough, if you don't understand this diagram, you don't understand why the transformer era might be over. I mean, honestly, looking at this chart is like looking at the blueprints for a completely different kind of brain. If you look at the left side of the image under VJEPA architecture, this is where the magic or the trick, depending on how cynical you are, actually happens. You see these two inputs at the bottom, the vision input and a textual query. 
These get fed into the predictor, which is ironically using Llama 3 transformer layers. But, and this is the part that fundamentally changes the game, look at what the predictor is actually trying to hit. It's not trying to predict the next word. It's trying to predict this thing right here labeled SY target embedding. Basically, instead of asking the AI to write an essay about the video, the architecture uses a separate Y encoder, which they're using Google's Gemma for remarkably, to create a thought bubble of what the answer should be. The VJEPA model then tries to match that thought bubble mathematically. It's like, essentially, instead of teaching a child to speak, you're teaching them to use telepathy to match the concept in your head. It skips the words entirely during the heavy thinking phase. Now shift your eyes to the right side of the chart, specifically where it says selective decoding. This dashed line right here is the smoking gun. In a normal GPT-4 LLM, the decoder, the part that speaks English, is the main event. You can't separate the thinking from the talking, but look at this architecture. The Y decoder is just tacked on at the end. It's completely optional. This proves the thesis. The model does all its reasoning, all its classification, and all its video understanding in that latent space in the middle, and it only activates the decoder if you specifically ask it to describe this video in one sentence. It treats language as just another utility, like a printer, rather than the operating system itself. That's a massive, massive architectural shift that explains why it's so much more efficient. It's not running the printer when it's trying to solve a math problem. Well, the fundamental idea is that current AI models are incredibly wasteful. You've probably seen those videos where, given a half-finished image, it's trying to predict the next set of pixels. Basically, it's playing a dumb guessing game, filling in the same information over and over again billions of times, but the VL Jeppa architecture is designed differently. It looks at an image frame and instead of predicting pixels, it tries to predict what happens next in an abstract form. It's like if it noticed someone reaching for a cup, it wouldn't try to draw the cup in the next frame, it would predict that after the reach, there's a potential grasp and then a lift. It's targeting the essential meaning of what's happening, not the actual image. And if you look at this graph in the paper right here, you can see why this matters. The efficiency games are absolutely wild. We're talking about a model that achieves superior results on complex vision tasks with roughly 16 billion parameters. I mean, in a world where we're talking about 18 trillion parameters for GPT-4, it's tiny. But it's beating massive vision language models like InstructBlip because it's not wasting its brain power trying to render the world. It's just trying to understand it. But, and this is the part that's really freaking people out in the robotics community, the biggest breakthrough here is temporal understanding. If you've ever played around with open source computer vision models, you know they're incredibly jumpy. They look at frame one and say, I see a pat. Then they look at frame two and say, I see a blurry shadow. And then frame three is, I see a dog. They have no object permanence. They treat every millisecond as if it's the first time they've ever opened their eyes. But VL Jeppa is different because it tracks meaning over time. In the visualizations meta released, which you can see if you scroll down to page 6 of the paper, they show these little dots representing the AI's internal state. When a video starts, the dots are red, that's the uncertainty. But as the action completes, the dots turn blue, which represents a stabilized understanding. The model understands that the hand is reaching for the cup, grasping the cup, and lifting the cup. It sees the narrative arc of the physical event. It's not just labeling images, it's understanding cause and effect. And this brings us to LeCun's data argument, which is something he's been screaming about on Twitter for months. But this paper essentially proves he might be right. We have this arrogance in the tech world where we think that because an LLM has read the internet, it knows everything. But Lacan argues that text is an incredibly low bandwidth way to learn about the universe. I mean, think about it. Fundamentally, when I write the sentence, the boy threw the ball, I'm stripping away 99.9% .9 of the reality. I'm not describing the arc of the ball, the friction of the air, the muscle tension, the sound of the impact, the gravity. I'm giving you a compressed symbol. If an AI only learns from text, it only learns the symbols. It never learns the underlying physics. Lacan essentially compares an LLM to someone who has read every single book in the library, but has never ever gone outside. 
But, and this is the part that you genuinely need to pay close attention to next, I want you to listen to exactly how he breaks down the limitations of text, because honestly, the way he frames this is absolutely wild. Okay, um, a typical LLM, as Adam mentioned, is trained on tens of trillions of, of words. Typically, there's only a few hundred thousand words, but you're just saying sentences. It's combinations. No, it's 30 trillion, 30 trillion words is, is a, a typical size for the training set, pre training of, a, of an LLM. Uh, a, a, a word is represented actually as sequences of tokens, doesn't really matter. Uh, and a token is about three bytes. So the total is about 10 to the 14 bytes, right? Uh, one with 14 zeros um, of training data to train those LLMs. And that corresponds to basically all the text that is uh, publicly available on the internet plus some other stuff. And it would take any of us something like half a million, half a million years for any of us to read through that material, right? So it's an enormous amount of textual data. Now compare this with what a child uh, perceives uh, during the first few years of life. Um, psychologists tell us that a four-year-old has been awake a, a total of 16,000 hours. Um, and there's about one byte per second going through the optic nerve, every single fiber of the optic nerve, and we have two millions of them. So it's about two megabytes per second getting to the visual cortex. Um, during 16,000 hours, do the arithmetics, and it's about 10 to the 14 bytes. A four-year-old has seen as much visual data as the biggest LLM trained on the entire text ever produced. And so what that tells you is that there is way more um, information in the real world, but it's also much more complicated. It's noisy, it's high dimensional, it's continuous, and basically the methods that are employed to train LLMs do not work in the real world. That explains why we have LLMs that can pass the bar exam or solve equations or compute integrals like college students and solve math problems. But we still don't have a domestic robot that can, you know, do the chores in the house. We don't, we don't even have level five self driving cars. I mean, we have them, but we cheat. So, um, I mean, we certainly don't have self driving cars that can learn to drive in 20 hours of practice like any teenager. Right. So obviously, we're missing something very big to get machines to the level of human or even animal intelligence. Right? Let's not talk about language. Let's talk about how a cat is intelligent or a dog. Um, we, we're not even at that level with uh, AI. Actually, the analogy he uses, and I think this is just such a devastating point, is the four-year-old child. He calculates that a four-year-old, just by keeping their eyes open and moving around the world in a few years, processes more data through their optic nerve than the largest LLMs learn from the entire text of the internet. The child learns gravity by dropping a spoon. The child learns object permanence by playing peekaboo. The LLM learns none of this. It just learns that the word drop is statistically likely to be followed by the word fall. That's a massive, massive difference. And this explains more of X paradox, which is this weird phenomenon where high-level reasoning like playing chess or passing the bar exam turns out to be computationally easy for AI, but low-level sensory motor skills like folding laundry or clearing a dishwasher are impossibly hard. We've built AIs that can write poetry but can't tie a shoelace because we've been training them on the library, not training them on the playground. So this architecture, VLJEPA, is basically the blueprint for solving that paradox. It's designed for robotics. If we want a robot in our house that can actually do chores, not just the Roomba that bumps into walls, but a robot that can look at a messy kitchen, understand the physics of a stack of plates, plan a path to the sink, and wash them without breaking them, it can't be running on a large language model. You can't talk a robot into understanding physics. It needs a world model. It needs to be able to predict the consequences of its actions in the physical world, not the text world. VOJEPA decouples intelligence from language. It allows the AI to think in concepts and only use language as an output format if you specifically ask it to. It's basically saying, I don't need to describe what I'm doing to understand what I'm doing. 
Now, I want to be fair here, because usually when a paper like this drops, the hype train goes off the rails. But we need to look at the reality. When the demo videos were released, the community, specifically the people on Reddit who actually test these things, scrutinized every single frame. And honestly, the model is not perfect. There are moments where VL Jeppa hallucinates. It misidentifies some actions. It's still a research project, but if you dismiss it because of that, you're missing the forest for the trees. The significance is not that it's a perfect product today. The significance is that it proves a new paradigm of learning is possible. The fact that a model with 16 billion parameters can compete with models 10 times its size proves that efficiency is about architecture, not just scale. Maybe writing a sonnet is actually easy, and clearing a dinner table is the true test of intelligence. And if VL Jeppa is the key to unlocking that physical intelligence, then the disruption coming for the blue-collar world, for robotics, for manufacturing, might be infinitely larger than what we've seen with ChatGPT. It's a wild time to be watching this space, and honestly, I don't think anyone knows for sure which path wins, but I wouldn't bet against the guy who taught computers how to see.